Well, Peggy, thank you so much for having us here at Tufton Farm. It's always a treat. We were here last summer right. at a somewhat similar time, and we're back again. I think a little hotter this time. It's, we're baking <laughs> today for sure. Yes. yes. I think the high is 97 degrees, and we've yeah. got insects drinking our sweat. It's just <laughs> really, really a scorcher today. Yeah. Um, but the backdrop of that is so important to then highlight how green your plants are right now. So mm -hmm. I would love to know, without a shade cloth, mm -hmm. um, how you keep your plants looking so nice and green uh, in pots here at Tufton Farm. There are thousands of, of potted plants out here in the nursery, but uh, one solution we found is to install aquamats underneath ah. the, the, the pots, and they're fed by water from a hose on a timer, mm -hmm. and so the plants are actually uh, through osmosis, they're drinking up the water from the mm. roots, which is much healthier. Uh, we don't have the overhead spraying and getting water on the foliage, and uh, it really helps. We do have to do a little bit of spot watering, but basically uh, lots of plants are getting watered in a very, very efficient way. Well, that's, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. I hadn't seen those before, and then yeah. the plants are able to drink deep when they're that's in right. those pots Which instead of just sort of want. on the surface. Sur superficial watering, yeah. Mm -hmm. So amongst this, the sea of green and your natives and your sort of specialty plants that you have here at Tufton, I see one that's looking a little yellower than the rest, but that's okay for this plant. What is this one right here? Oh, that's the bleeding heart uh -huh. that uh, blooms in the springtime, one of the ornamental varieties. Uh -huh. It's actually a species. It has big, big pink, red heart-shaped flowers, right. but it's going dormant right now, so that's why it's starting to turn yellow. That's perfectly normal. It's supposed to happen, and let it, let it be. Don't yes. cut it off. You can it let needs it those nutrients to go back down. It can start drying out a little bit soon. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. yes. Um, I was just on a hike yesterday at St. Mary's Wilderness mm -hmm. area and saw a bleeding heart that was in bloom that did have kind of bushy foliage. Yeah. Is that the same type? No, it's a wonderful native species. The native one will keep blooming all summer uh -huh. and has some beautiful blue-green foliage. It's it's very very nice. Yes. So make a choice: foliage all summer right. or that big spring pop of that those red bleeding hearts. Perfect. Yeah, that's right. All yeah. right. So I see that you've got your aquamats here. You have your your hose here for hand watering. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of gardeners have an issue in the summertime. It's a bit counterintuitive, but with runoff. So you think the mm -hmm. earth might absorb the water, but mm -hmm. with the Virginia red clay, it sometimes gets too baked to do so. So mm -hmm. I see that you guys have come up with a solution yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. It's really great. We should go check it out. All right, let's check it yeah. out now. Well, a number of years ago, we realized we were creating a little lake down here with all the runoff from the cold frames when we mm -hmm. water them. There's pipes running underground. Uh -huh. And uh, so we had an idea to make a rain garden. Uh, that they were coming into vogue at that point. Mm -hmm. And so we dug an area out and, and filled it with some really uh, uh, moisture retaining soil and uh -huh. peat and that sort of thing. And then planted some shrubs and, and perennials that really liked the water. Well, Peggy, it's beautifully designed, and I love that you incorporated both the uh, rocks that were found on site and some river rocks here. So um, what kind of plants will tolerate wet feet in a rain garden like this? Well, we have the uh, winterberry holly, which is uh -huh. one of my favorites. This is a, a female plant, so it has, uh, it'll make these beautiful red berries in the fall. The male is just up the hill a ways. Um, we have cardinal flower, uh -huh. and um, the ironweed is one of my favorite mm. uh, perennials, that beautiful kind of electric purple blue color. Yes, and late in the season too. Late everything's in the season. sort of getting yellow. Yes, one of the great <laughs> asters out here. Uh -huh. And uh, so yeah, it's a lot of fun to watch the things uh, growing and, and blooming at different different times of the year as well. Absolutely, so. great win-win solution for yeah. uh, working with the, the landscape on yeah. your property. Well, just one really fun thing, it's uh, just worth mentioning that uh, as we were walking down here, we saw a very unusual plant that's more likely found in a forest. What yeah. is that plant? The Indian pipes is, uh -huh. uh, uh, I believe the Latin name is Monotropa, uh -huh. if I recall. Uh, it doesn't make chlorophyll, so it's pure mm -hmm. white, and it, it's actually a parasite on roots of, of, of trees. That's right, yeah. that's right. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I heard last time that you guys were planning on growing some vegetables here at yes. Tufton, so let's go check out the progress on that. We're growing one acre of produce, and it's all going to Monticello's Farm Table Cafe. We're actually growing 40 different types of vegetables, and we wow. have 130 cultivars within that. Wow, amazing. So what are some of the, the dishes at the cafe that we could look for some of your produce that you're growing here at Tufton? One of the main ones is we have a Monticello salad uh -huh. and we strive to grow everything that's in that. So okay. we've got shaved beets, we've got fennel, we've got all lettuces grown here, uh, baby kales, arugula, uh -huh. that sort of thing. Wonderful. So a lot of people may be curious as to which varieties that you're growing are from the Jeffersonian era. Are there any or just more modern ones? There are. It's actually a mix of different things. So we've got the cow's horn okra. We've mm -hmm. got um, a few different types of beans like asparagus bean, case knife pole bean, uh -huh. and we've got Weathersfield uh, red onions. Mm -hmm. And so 
Uh, we've got quite a bit, but it's a mix really of modern cultivars and older varieties. Fantastic. So I see the sort of little um, fallow section where you've already harvested and on our way in, we were looking at beautiful bunches of garlic and onions that we're curing. So can you tell us a bit about those? Yeah, so actually just this last week, we went ahead and did a group harvest. We got about 300 pounds of potatoes. Not bad for the inaugural year. Wow. Really, we're gonna be ramping up production and eventually expanding this to multiple acres. But in mm -hmm. this first year, we're finding out about the fertility needs of the soil. Mm -hmm. And so we grew 13 different types of garlic. Again, we're, cr we're really trying to kind of sample different types to find sure. out which configuration is going to produce the best for us here in Central Virginia. Gotta find out what works. Um, the corn that you're showing us right now is uh, has a story. Can you tell us that corn story? Sure does, yeah. So the, the corn variety is actually called Cox Prolific Corn. Uh -huh. And uh, it's named after John Hartwell Cox, who was mm -hmm. a friend of Thomas Jefferson's. It was grown at the, Bl the Brimo Plantation here in Virginia. Oh, Brimo. And at sure. one point, it was one of the most widely grown corn types. It's a dent corn, so it's mm -hmm. used for cornmeal and grits across the entire southern U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, it, um, it was not really known to have been grown by any uh, farmers. And a few years back, a mm -hmm. food historian by the name of David Shields, who's mm -hmm. been a presenter at our Heritage Harvest Festival, mm -hmm. found this variety, and he gifted it to us. We grew it out last year, wow. and we're growing it here at Tufton this year in order to get a seed crop. Very cool, very cool. And um, I've even be told, been told there are some top secret varieties that we can't even talk about yet. So I think that's really, really fun that you guys are always uh, kind of pushing the envelope with that sort of thing. Stay and tuned. We're looking forward to that, the grand reveal as always. That's right. Um, so there are a couple other projects that are happening now. So every time we're here, we, we love uh, learning what's on the horizon. So what, what are you doing other than this acre of uh, farm to table production? So we've got uh, beef cattle out here, and then most recently we've actually expanded to 50 beehives in a third mm -hmm. apiary site. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be bottling and selling honey year-round at the Monticello shop. And you all will be working with birds as well, is that right? Yeah, so we actually partnered with Virginia Working Landscapes. That's mm -hmm. a program of the Smithsonian Conservation Biology Institute. Mm -hmm. And we did a citizen survey science project out here. They came out and surveyed and listened for different birds in mm -hmm. order to get some baseline information on what mm -hmm. wildlife species we have out here. Mm. So I really love that you guys do your research and do your homework so well at Monticello and Tufton. And so to solve one of your nutrient deficiencies, you have found just the right cover crop for one of your beds. So could, could you talk about that? Sure, absolutely. So we have extensively soil tested and what we found is we're actually just deficient in phosphorus, but otherwise we've got great soil organic uh, matter out here and we try to manage all this production organically. Mm -hmm. So we are very keen as we replace beds to put in a cover crop and buckwheat has been one of the ones that is, uh, is great at accessing phosphorus stores mm -hmm. and releasing that back into the soil. Very good, and just so good for, for the health of the soil long term to make sure you're putting those nutrients back in. It's all really about the soil. Right. Well, Keith, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for all this work, and can't wait to try that Monticello salad at Monticello Cafe. Yeah, thank you very much, Patrick. Right. Appreciate it.